I was 19, because of what can best be described as crippling self-doubt, I took an overdose of sleeping pills and lost three days of my life. Now, I'm 53, and I'm aware we get an average of 30,000 days on this planet. So on reflection, I consider my younger self to be irritatingly wasteful. <laughs> oh, and in case you're wondering, spoiler alert, I survived. <laughs> but that experience, along with others, caused me to ask some important questions about the whys and wherefores of how to do this life thing, you know? And so since then, I have been building a solid self-image based on who I want to be, on what I stand for, on what I stand up for. And because of that, I believe I've found my voice. And it's based on strong personal values, ideals. Call them what you will. For me, they are the very foundation of a life worth living. We live in this world of alternative facts, right? We hear a lot of talk about values or, sadly, lack of them. And in the business world, it's rife. Why do organizations spend so much time, money, and effort constructing a set of values which, let's face it, for the most part, aren't worth the mouse mat they're written on? Well, for the same reason I did. Because when you know what you stand for, it will drive behaviors, decisions, and success. Research tells us that organizations built on a specific set of ideologies are more successful than those that aren't. In fact, they financially outperform them by a factor of 14. Values matter. But values are personal. And that's where, in my opinion, many organizations go wrong. They can't be dictated. They must be chosen bought into and lived. And it's exactly the same with leadership. If you want to be a great and authentic leader, you have to start with yourself and your values. Take the cabin crew school of training, for example. Do you notice when we get on a plane, the cabin crew seem to be absolutely obsessed with telling us what to do when it crashes. They say a mask will fall from the panel in front of us. They say if you have an elderly relative with you or a child, Put your own mask on first. Sorry. Selfish or sensible. You're of no use to anybody else until you've got yourself sorted out. Start with yourself. General Schwarzkopf, who led his troops to victory in the Gulf War, said leadership is about two things. Character and strategy. He said, if you must be without one, be without the strategy. So what we're left with is character. So our quest as a leader, or simply as a human being, is to find our voice, and it's our values and ideals that define our voice, what you stand for, what you stand up for in life. So how high should we aim? Because if you notice, they get kind of chipped away at over time. I mean, little kids, they want to aim high, don't they? They want to get 10 out of 10 in their spellings. They want to be everything, win everything. And I, I don't know when that stops. But I do remember a conversation with my son when he was 13. I was doing that kind of interested parenting kind of thing we've all given a go at. Hmm? <laughs> what homework have you got? Got a history essay. What's it got to be about? It's got to be about two pages. <laughs> Come on, how many of us have been there writing bigger to fill the pages instead of concentrating on the quality of the content, chipping away at our personal standards, striving on just enough? And it's the same with our values. So I challenge you, be yourself, find your voice, know who you want to be based on your standards, your values. If you get your voice right, all of the rest of the stuff follows. So I'll finish with this from another leader. Barack Obama said, our strength comes not from the might of our arm or the scale of our wealth, but from our ideals. So I have to ask, what are yours? Thank you.